Last week on the channel, I showed you how to connect Ableton Live to your X32 console to send tracks from Ableton to your X32 without any additional gear. Now that's a great setup if your laptop is nearby your console, but in most of our scenarios, our X32 is at front of house, Ableton Live is on stage. In this video, I wanna show you how to send tracks from Ableton Live using a ethernet cable and not using Dante into your X32 console. This is the uh, greatest way to get tracks and a high amount of tracks out of Ableton Live into your X32 console. Uh, you're gonna check out a preview lesson from my brand new using X32 with Ableton Live course. So check out this lesson completely for free and I'll see you at the end of it. Okay, so let's talk about how to get audio from Ableton Live to our X32 uh, in a way that doesn't use any of the physical inputs on our device, doesn't require USB, and allows us to do this over a long distance. So if your X32 console is in front of house, your tracks computer is on stage with the drummer, with the playback tech, um, then you can send audio from Ableton Live to your X32 over a ethernet cable. Now we could do this over Dante, um, we've talked about that in our Dante course, how to do that, but we're actually not going to use Dante for this. What we're going to use is this magical box I've talked about multiple times, um, has a funny, silly name, but it's incredibly powerful. This is the Clark Technic. The box name is the DN 9630. What this does is it converts USB to AES 50 and AES 50 is a protocol that the X32, the Behringer wing, the P16, uh, well, P16 uses Ultranet. It's a little different, but AES 50 is the, the protocol that Behringer consoles use to talk to each other, talk to stage boxes and connect. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to take my ethernet cable. I'm going to take my KT USB and I'm gonna take my USB cable. So I've got one end of this USB cable plugged into my computer already. I've got the other end here that's gonna go into my KT USB uh, box, my DN9630. I'll show you why I call it the KT USB in a second. Uh, first thing I'm gonna show you on here is sample rate. So I've got this set to 48. That's gonna match my console. So kind of hard to focus. Let's see if we can get it. Ooh, there we go, 48. Um, I'm gonna plug in USB to this. So there's my USB port on it. We're gonna plug into the front. You'll see the blue light turns on on that. Kind of hard to see, there you go. There's a blue light. Now there's two US uh, ethernet ports on this, control data, and then there's one that says AES 50. Um, I'm gonna plug into the AES 50 port on this. So I'll take one end of my ethernet cable. This is this is so cool, uh, you're, you're gonna love this. Uh, and this box is pretty affordable. I think it's, I don't know, three, 400 bucks. It's not super cheap, but for what it does, it's really powerful. So let's plug into the AES 50 port on our box. I'm going to set this down on the ground here, gently as possible. And then I'm going to take the other end of this, and my console sitting right to the, the right of me. I'm going to plug this into either of the AES50 ports on my console, but I have to choose one that's open. Both are open in my case, so I'm going to go with A. Okay, so I plugged into AES50A. So now let's go into Ableton Live. Let's do, uh, we'll go kind of quickly because we've run through this, what, three, four times now. Um, let's go into Ableton Live. Let's go to Preferences, Command, Comma. Go to Audio. Again, Control, Comma, if you're on a PC. We're going to go to the Audio tab here. Under Audio Output Device, we're going to choose KT USB. Ah, see, now you know why I kept calling this KT USB. It's called the DN9630, but it shows up in Ableton Live as KT USB, which is the only thing that matters to me in life is how does something show up in Ableton Live. So I call this the KT USB. I'm going to select it. You'll see it shows 48 channels in and out. Uh, that depends on the sample rate you're set to. I think if you go to 96, then you get 32, if I remember correctly. Maybe less than that, 28 or something, 24. I don't know. I'm bad at math. Uh, but 48 in, 48 out. So if I go to output config, you see I got a lot of outputs I can configure here. I'm still just going to leave this to one and two all the way through uh, 10. One slash two all the way to 10. Okay, and we'll hit OK. Uh, sample rate is controlled by the switch on the box itself, so I don't need to mess with this 48. I want to make sure it matches the console. Uh, if I go to the console here, again, setup, go to mixer, 48 is my sample rate. So I just want to make sure those match, and they do, which is awesome. Latency is buffers, uh, my buffer size here under the latency section, 512. Again, just leave this set to 512. If you have high latency, lower it um, uh, until you have computer issues, then raise it slightly till your issues go away, but your latency stays uh, pretty similar. Okay, so this is set up. Uh, we're ready to go. Now, in Ableton, uh, I would say let's do our routing, but we've already done this. Audio 2, external out, 1, 2, Three, uh, three slash four, five slash six, seven slash eight, nine slash ten. Okay, so all my routing has been done here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. 
So we're good. We're set and ready to go there. So now let's go. Um, we're done with this. Let's go to our X32 now. Okay. So we're going to go over to our X32 here. Again, I've got a um, X32 rack next to me. Um, it doesn't have physical faders. So I'm showing you on the software, the X32 edit software, which is honestly a little easier to see instead of a, a bad camera angle. First thing I want to point out, maybe hard to notice this A button here is lit up. Uh, it can't detect what the device is, but it says, hey, okay, that's AES50. It's connected connected and it's it's a valid device so it's going to light up and show as green so now what we need to do is say hey i want this row of inputs on my console to come from this source okay so uh we'll do just like what we did with the usb section here we'll go to routing we'll go to inputs we'll still use 17 through 24 25 through 32 um, but this time instead of coming from the card it's going to come from aes 50a now why aes 50a because the physical port on the device that I'm connected to says AES-50A. Now, when should I use AES-50B? What would you guess? When you're plugged into AES-50B, okay? Clear on that, pretty simple, pretty easy, but don't think too hard about it. Okay, AES-50A, one through eight, nine through 16. I I'm, I'm have to use nine and 10 of uh, the next row here, so I'm gonna choose those. So we'll do 17 through 24. All right, it's going to be one through eight and channels 25 through 32 are going to be nine through 16. Um, now, thankfully, everything, all the work I did before, my labels are still there. I've got my stereo pairs linked up, right? So loops three and four, I clicked on three. I linked it so that three and four are linked. I can control those together. Now we go into Ableton Live and let's start back where we were. And we're going to loop and you see we're sending signal from Ableton Live into uh, our X32. And all of that is happening over uh, an, an Ethernet cable from the small box DN9630. Now, why is that really cool? Well, it's really cool because I could take that box. Let me grab it. Oh, that's hard to reach, but I got it. Uh, I could take this box. I can leave this sitting by my computer. It's super important. This USB cable is a direct connection to my computer, maybe a USB hub, but if at all possible, make it a powered USB hub. Um, this is sitting next to my computer. This Ethernet cable, though, this the power of this Ethernet cable is, gosh, this thing could run, um, uh, I mean, however many hundreds of feet I need. I'm sure there's some limit to Ethernet cable, and some IT person will let me know in the comments. Um, but it, it could run however long I need that cable to be to then go to front of house to go to my console. And what's really great about this is on the console itself, I'm not using any of the physical inputs on it. So in this case, this guy has 16 physical inputs. All 16 physical inputs are still open, still available. Um, and I can still get tracks from Ableton into my console. Now, in theory, I could get audio from my console back into Ableton to record in but we're not going to talk about that in this particular scenario. So this is super powerful, super cool. Now, what do we do though, if we're using a stage box, like an S16 stage box, uh, we don't have a long ethernet cable that we can run, but we do have a stage box on stage. How can we use this plus the S16? We'll talk about that next. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that preview from our Using X32 with Ableton Live course. In that course, I show you how to connect uh, Ableton Live to your X32 to send audio back and forth, how to send MIDI back and forth, how to control your X32 with Ableton Live, as well as how to control Ableton Live with your X32. If you have a console, an X32 console and Ableton Live, you need to check out this course. In order to get access to that, you can click the link in the description in this video. I've got a couple preview lessons available that you can watch now. If you want to get access to the full course, you've got to subscribe and become a From Studio to Stage student. You could go to fromstudiotostage.com slash subscribe to get access to that course, plus everything else we have on the site. All the other courses, 24-7 on-demand access, uh, 200 credits in your account every single month that you can purchase content from the shop, a monthly call uh, with me where you can ask me any question you have about Ableton Live or connecting with the gear you have on stage, as well as a private exclusive community just for From Studio to, to Stage students, plus some extra stuff that I I can't talk about in this video, but to get access to all of that, again, you've got to head to from studio to stage.com slash subscribe. Now, if you're not ready to become a student quite yet, I post content like this every single day, 10 a.m. Central on the channel. That's right. Every single day. I don't sleep. All I do is record video for you uh, to get access to that. Make sure you hit subscribe to the YouTube channel here and hit the bell icon so that when I post new content, you can check out the title, see if it sounds like something you're interested in. And if so, you can watch the tutorial. Thanks so much for watching this one. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.